From the home offices of Ash and Flow, this is Unbillable Hours, a podcast about professional services marketing. Stick around and listen to our insights, tips, and best practices to improve your firm's marketing and even your career. Welcome, everybody, to this second episode where, as you'll be delighted, we are joined by yet another guest. Today with us is Ute Wallenberg, also Excellent. from Germany, like myself. She's a, she's a veteran in sort of big consulting firms where she's worked on the business side, but she's here today because she also specializes in something else, which is marketing related. Ute, do you want to, do you want to say what it is and sort of take us away on <laughs> no. the topic? <clears throat> Absolutely. And thanks for inviting me. I'm, it's a pleasure to be on your podcast. Yeah. So as you said, I mean, a veteran in the consulting industry, I've been in, in strategy consulting for quite a while. And I've also specialized in account strategy. So and I think that's that's a topic that we want to speak about today. Yeah. So so how does that lead into account planning and what can marketing do about it? Yeah, exactly. And, and I think so Ash and I wanted to ask you whether or not you could start from the very top so if we say account planning could you explain to the people what that is and and, and sure and then, yeah like you said i like the point of like what has marketing to do with it <clears throat> yeah no absolutely i mean let's probably start with the word account yeah so what do we mean by that i guess it's it's a word that's used across the consulting industry to describe a particular client organization yeah so this can be anything from an enterprise to a nonprofit to a government agency all of that would be considered an account and for those where consulting companies believe they they can grow their business substantially they typically come up with an account team that is dedicated to growing this account and the plan how to grow this account i.e how to further develop the business with that particular client so account planning in that sense then is this account team, the people who sort of manage the client, deliver the work, they they sit down and think ahead in, I don't know, what, what could we offer? How could we help the client in the next, what's the usual time period, 12 months, six months? I don't know. What's, what's the, what's the yeah, planning cycle? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, a planning cycle is typically one fiscal year. Yeah. So that's okay. a 12 month period, but it, it depends a bit on how one likes to look. And from the methodology that I have worked with around developing account strategies, you are looking at broader timeframes. Yeah. So there, there are elements that are not bound to any time, which is the purpose of why this team is coming together. And then there are, there, there are steps where you break down your next actions with that account and how to grow the business purposely beyond a fiscal year. So you say 24 months or 36 months, simply so that you have something that's not just bound to your personal remuneration, because more than more often than not, your bonus depends on how much this account grows, right? But this oh. is always measured within the box of the year. Yeah, so <laughs> let's not forget about that. Right. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's an important detail that one should have. And then, but when you extend that time frame, you can get more strategic. It's less tactical and less about making that next sale, but actually looking broader on on what actions do you need to take to really grow the business together with that client. But it's just the way you describe yeah. it, it sounds it sounds. Um, sorry, I, should, I just wanted to ask that dumb question, and I'll let you go. Uh, so it sounds as if this is an exercise pretty much done by the business, like by the practice of the account team, mm -hmm. right? So yep. I was going to ask what, what, mar why does marketing even get involved? But Ash wanted to say something as well. Sorry, Ash for. Yeah, because uh, Uta, you were mentioning about <clears throat> long term planning as well as fiscal planning, probably to the interest, interest of some of our audience, it might be good to just explain like the difference between a project and a program, which both sit under account planning, right? Yeah, yeah, in a way. I mean, it's. I would start even with one click to the left, which is there are strategies around this account. Mm -hmm. So you would try and find out how you can help this particular client achieve their objectives. And you would come up with a set of actions, and this is a very broad term as I'm using it here to, to replace the word strategy, 
but some actions that help that client with particular challenges that they are faced with. It might be opportunities and challenges coming from the market environment that they want to deal with. And there is, of course, also an internal side, like the strengths and the weaknesses that this particular client has in their organization. And you try and find clever combinations of, for instance, how can you use a strength of that client to make use of a market opportunity to achieve an objective and therefore create a strategy that helps you to, to grow this business. Yeah? And then there are many other combinations that you can come up with. And, and then if you click down into these strategies, so these, these actionable recommendations that you have for a client, there are programs underneath that is the next level. So these are combinations of projects, which would then be the, the smallest level. And typically, and this is the interesting one, is you start an account when you first get in contact with a new organization simply by a project. So you start from that very small nucleus, but then work your way up to a program. So you widen it, combine it with more projects left and right, and eventually you help them with a strategic goal. And this is probably the moment when you crack the nut and this becomes a strategic client for you. Yeah. So I guess I've, I've went off on a tangent here. Right? No, no, that, that, that's good because you said something <laughs> interesting. Because you yeah. said, okay, let's you you look at you build your own strategies sort of almost on behalf of the client, right? Do I understand that right? You think about what could we be doing with them that helps them. And you said uh, you could could find market opportunities. So what you're not saying account planning is we look at all the major initiative they have going on, like hyper global mega corp. We know there's a cost saving effort. We know there's a digital transformation effort. Mm -hmm. And how can we insert ourselves or the firm into these? That's not just that. Right, but you also mm-hmm. just start with a do clean sheet of paper and think about well, what initiatives could they do because they might be beneficial. It's almost like doing Absolutely. consulting without having the, <laughs> the without having won the work. So you're thinking strategically on behalf of them, and then you yeah. go and make that suggestion. All right, that's that's an interesting first takeaway for me. It's like you know, don't just elbow your way into the existing initiatives, but really think about what could be good for them. What should they be doing? All right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's essential that you walk for a mile in the client's shoes and just think through through everything from their lens. And okay. it's it's so interesting because you will start these thought processes from things that you can find through your own research, through things that you heard through the grapevines while working on this client, or just other sources that you might have at your disposal. Okay. But there will be a point in this process where you will also need to validate your findings with the client. And this is then where a very interesting process starts that we call co-creation. So much rather than you just making up clever ideas that you could put in front of the client, mm-hmm. you actually co-create those strategies together with them. And this is an essential point in originating new work. And this is the word that I think we should introduce here because that whole methodology that I am used to work with really focuses on, on finding new sources of revenue for your client and therefore also for yourself when you help them implement those. Okay. And this is what, what is typically called origination. Yeah. So you come in way before the client even sends out a so-called request for proposal, RFP, or, or something of that kind, but you are really the one who started that idea. Yeah. That gives and, you an advantage. That's and, and that's thing. I'm guessing where you increase the win rates to a to a rate you can only dream of when when you're in competitive bidding processes, right? So that's that's the other. That is exact. Yes, yes. Okay. That, that that's a tremendous level that you have. And so, when you talk about origination and like account planning, it's also good to just mention in the whole go to market strategy, which then ties in nicely with your account planning as well as your marketing strategies. Absolutely, yeah. But so, so you you mentioned validating your thinking with the client. So, if I did the account planning with my team, I would call you and I would say, Ute, listen, me and the team, we've done some thinking around that. I don't know, you know, the, um, the, your business in Europe, and we think we found two market opportunities that I would like to discuss with you. Can I, b- before we sort of continue to work on that on our own time, can I just validate what the interest is? So it's sort of that type of conversation, is that what the validation is? Like you just present early thinking to them and then see if they are interested to to pursue that? Or yeah, what is that then? yeah, yeah. So, so, so what's interesting is when people are new to this process, you will find that there is some hesitation of going with a half-baked idea to a client. But this is actually a, a very critical yeah. moment in, in building trust and also just 
are presenting yourself as not the perfect consultant that you are used to uh, be on the outside, yeah, but oh, but I just like as a as a human yeah. doing doing business with another human being and just wanting to understand better. So it's it's also a mindset shift that comes with strategic account planning, yeah, because you you become partners on on eye level and you really work shoulder to shoulder on these strategies, yeah, and that's 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 tremendous for the relationship going forward. And typically, is, what I found is that 99% of, of clients are very open to this concept, and 99% of consultants are very hesitant to try it. So. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, can, can I ask about the, co yeah. you, you, you mentioned co-creation a couple of times, and I just realized in my example, just me just presenting an idea and asking you if you like them, that's probably not what you meant when you said co-creation. So where, where does, the, how does the co-creation happen? I have the half-baked idea, I've come to you, we discuss it, mm -hmm. and then what's, mm -hmm. what's uh, do you have an example of co-creation and how that works? Yeah, sure. I mean, you can you can do different things. I've, I've seen multiple things work really well. So one thing could be that you have an idea of what a strength might be in the organization of your client, but you want to get it validated. So maybe aside of another meeting that you have, you just ask the question, yeah? And nobody even notices that that can be a point of validation. On the okay. other hand, All I've right. seen just take the entire strategic landscape that they have come up with, put it on a big sheet um, in, in the middle of a big conference table, and then just gave everybody a pen and people started working on it. That also works really nice. Yeah. So the, the client sort of inserts itself and, and they help with, they provide the data you need to validate your hypothesis or, they, or yeah. they, they join then as you work on the conclusions from, from what you think you found. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And this, nice. in, in, in this whole thing works because you say we do this to help you achieve your objectives. Yeah. So the, the most important validation that you can do at the beginning of this entire process is actually getting check marks behind the objectives that this plan sets out to reach. Yeah. So still sounds mm -hmm. like a lot of consulting work very close to the actual business. So st coming back to my mm -hmm. earlier question, what, what does marketing do in that mix? Like, why, why, why are we in the room? Um, <laughs> what is our... Yeah, yeah, no, it's, that, that's the key question that we want to answer today. Absolutely. So I think there, there are several phases to this process. We kind of got stuck um, a little bit on the fact finding strategizing part. And this is where marketing can, of course, already come in. So in this point in the process, marketing can certainly offer perspectives on what's going on in the market environment of this client. We would probably know from research what are some of the threats that are out in the market. And we might even be able to validate some of the thoughts that we might have about our client's marketing operations, if this is part of what we want to discuss. Yeah? Okay. So, so this is where the marketing add value at that stage. The next stage in this process is to figure out how the consulting company can take the insights that they've gotten from the strategizing exercise and reflect on their own internal organization. So do they need to build up a different account team? Do they add capabilities to the account team? So these are the people that will um, work almost on a daily basis with that client. Or do they need to, I don't know, procure a new piece of research to go deeper into some of the areas that are of interest? All of these good things coming out there. And there will also be marketing actions falling out of what do we need to do going forward in order to grow this account. So this is then where marketing can start with their planning. And then there is the, the third step. And this is where this process then bleeds into opportunity management, which is where you then develop concrete value propositions that will eventually convert into sales. So mm -hmm. we have really started with, with an exercise that starts to open up a funnel that probably we didn't even knew existed. And then we start trickling it down through nurturing and eventually really uh, selling value propositions to clients. Yeah. And this is then the, the marketing and sales enablement work that we are used to do daily. And, yeah. Yeah. and I think that is nowadays a red hot topic in the market called ABM, account based mm -hmm. marketing, right? Where you, where you essentially do uh, drip campaigns, maybe, or lead, lead nurturing exercises for just one specific company, or maybe even a part of a company, right? Account could just be, mm -hmm. I don't know, the German subsidiary of some global corporation or something like that. Um, so just to take yeah. one step into that, it's since we're talking about account planning, when you come in from a marketing perspective, what key questions do you think you'd like um, the, the account planning team to you know think about as you come in and 
what are you looking for from them? So let's see. I mean, as a marketer, I obviously also want to understand what are the objectives of that client. Now, yeah? because this is what I will anchor any messaging in. And it's actually important for the person who is communicating whatever this team comes up with to the client to understand every piece of the process. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's just crucial that marketing is a natural part of that process because the better marketing understands each individual strategy, its translation into the actions that the consulting firm will take and the value proposition that comes out of this process, the better the marketer will be able to, to cobble this together into a cohesive story and tell it to the client. Yeah. So that's actually an important insight that I think I can share at this point is when I, when I switched my career from strategy consulting to marketing, what was a real eye opener is how much marketing is actually a catalyst for clarity. So, so marketing is really what helps you to, to remove the bullshit from the corporate speech that you typically use in a meeting. So everything seems like it's going fine. It makes sense. And all of a sudden, you have to explain it to a client. And this is marketing's role, simply explaining it to a client. I think this is all that it yeah. is about, essentially. And all of a sudden, you realize things are not clear. The value that we saw is actually not there. Or the words that we have used don't mean anything. I would add to that. And this is disarming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would add to that that I think also, Ash, if I can answer part of the on part of your question, I think if I, if I was in that situation, I would, like Uta said, I would try to make sure that the messaging is as good as it can be. And uh, that often requires a few pieces that get missed if messaging is solely driven from the business side. Because the business people very often end up on a messaging that goes along the lines of, we help X client do Y so that they can have more of Z, right? This, this, this logic of here's what we do, here's what here's the generic value proposition and, and the benefit of that generic also added into it. And that is an important step. It's like, it's an important message to have, but it's usually the input that goes into a messaging process that is then has to be much more client-centric. And would you use the word story? I, li I like that. Like you have to tell the client the story of their world and what's happening there and you have to mm -hmm. make sense of it and then insert the the service ideas you had or the project ideas you came up with into that story as so the the, the classical we help x do y right is is it's not bad it's just not as effective as as other types of storytelling which are more about the client mm -hmm. and what's happening for them versus what your firm has to offer right so i, I think that i would push that and, and or maybe add that to to what you said. Uta. No, that, those are good points to add. And so here, here's an interesting one for both. Well, primarily for Uta, but you can also chip and flow. The thing is, when you look at account planning, they're looking at specific accounts, specific regions and markets. There's almost <laughs> tunnel vision kind of thing when you go there. Whereas when you're coming from marketing, like for a firm. You're seeing a more holistic picture of whatever function area group that you're looking at and sometimes it could be a company-wide and a market-wide well not market-wide but more global uh perspective so how would you help the account team to like see outside of just the account so that they can so you can focus on like you know upselling or growth or even like hitting their strategic priorities like finding what they miss do you have a process? You're definitely onto something. As a marketer, you, you are connected across the company to understand the functional programs, the industry programs, the service programs, whatever makes up this consulting company you're working in. Mm -hmm. And you have this much broader view of what else could be out there. So what I've seen happen in these um, account strategy sessions is uh, when the team isn't diverse enough um, in the sense of the skill profiles that you have around the table, the plans can get very myopic very quickly. So it's very important that these teams that come together come from very different angles of the consulting firm to offer a maximum of inside knowledge and, and, and just the wealth in ideas. So if and, and I've rarely seen marketing being incorporated in these discussions, to be frank, right, which is a miss from my perspective, because as you said, this marketer comes with this broad view of what the company has to offer. And they can make connections that people that sit in the different industries or functions and have their expertise there, and they can bring it together and, and be a 
almost a moderator on the table in, in the way that they can see how things connect to each other. So how early do you think these teams need to engage with marketing? Like when do you, when do they need to like, you know, connect with marketing? Like is mm -hmm. it the time when they find the opportunity or is it something a little down the line as they're like building, responding to an RFP or is it even like, as early as we were mentioning, like, you know, during a yearly planning session or something, when, when do you think they should engage? I would say during the, the yearly planning session, definitely. I mean, marketing should have a seat at the table of the account leadership team. I think it's as simple as that because it's, it's a key growth function and the whole idea of these account teams is growth. So marketing needs to be on yeah. for logical yeah. reasons. If I can, if I can throw in a tip, the, the one way to get that seat at the table, um, which because I use, you mentioned it's not quite often the case that it exists. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to go and push for it. And one way to do that is to offer, uh, just send an agenda suggestion and maybe offer one or two, I don't know, workshop exercises or breakout sessions. Like, like look, just pitch the, the account leader or the partner, whoever's owning this, right? You could, as a marketer, you could say, look, can you invite me for, or, you know, if you, consider to invite me to your planning session this year, here's a suggestion for two things we could do, right? And then you offer, mm -hmm. uh, may, maybe it's a, re, re, we call it a refinement section and you look at the, the, the target audiences and the definitions they've made and just offer to nail them down further. Could be a messaging session. I don't know what you can bring to the table, but I think that's the way to get into that meeting is, A, just ask to be there, right? Step one, yeah. <laughs> doesn't hurt. And yeah. then B, increase your chances of getting a yes by maybe offering one or two points you could bring to that meeting uh, other than yeah. just sitting there and eating the, the, the pretzels and drinking the coffee, right? <laughs> <laughs> So, so based on that, to all the account planners or like listening, what I would say is to, when you're doing your stakeholder session, yeah, I know I hop on this, make sure that the marketers are not just an inform, but they're actually a consult. Mm -hmm. Ooh, there we go again with the matrix. Yes. It'll never, it will never leave <laughs> us. <laughs> no, it won't. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. Yes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but. But I'm, I'm realizing we're running up against the clock here, but I wanted, Uta, I wanted to ask you, could you, can we summarize the process you laid out just a little bit, maybe just the high level steps. Can we do that one again? And then before we leave, I wanted to ask if you have one specific tip you would share, but in, in terms of summing up the process, you, you mentioned, you started with two interesting things. You said you always start with the strategy and you always have a, you try to have a longer term view on this, right? And then yeah. what? What do we say after that? If, just to, to summarize it once more for the people and, and for me, to be clear. Yeah, no worries, no worries. I mean, just, just to put it in an order. I mean, it starts with having a high performing, diverse account planning team that's coming together regularly to, first of all, form a plan for the year and beyond and review it regularly. Secondly, you need to define the purpose of this team, the vision of this team, and probably the goal that this team wants to achieve in the long run to come up with your with your guiding principles and your guardrails for what what you will do in the next years together with this team you then start the strategy work and validate this with the client to co-create strategies that this account team can take forward you then translate this into concrete steps that the consulting firm can take to improve their services for that client and then finally, you come up with value propositions that you put in front of this client to craft very strong and lasting relationships and win more work, as simple as that. So that's, that's the process. And from my perspective, marketing needs to be on from the very first step uh, because it will add to this high performing team that you want to create to grow the account. And they probably help shaping the value propositions and, and also then build a marketing plan around that or in, in, integrate that part, the account part into their marketing plans overall, right? Yeah, yeah. I would almost say that the marketing plan is then just a natural outcome of that entire process. It's, it's one of the streams that comes out of it next mm -hmm. to offering development. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now I know you've run many, many, many of these sessions and you've run into all the obstacles that that could have. <laughs> so any objections, <laughs> problems, hesitancies, blah, blah, blah. I almost said uh, consulting from bullshit. You could come up against, you've run into, do, do you have like one 
tip <laughs> to share yeah, for how to conduct tip. this stuff? Like, is there a major learning you had or anything? Any secret sauce you could you could share here? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so the secret sauce that I've tried to 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 point towards a couple of times is really the client objectives and answer, anchoring yourselves in them. So the biggest risk that every team can fall into while doing account planning is just pushing out services that they need to sell right now. Yeah, but oh, not yeah. really watching what's really needed for the client. And that is where you can lose trust capital, where you can just be another consulting firm and where you cannot be perceived as a trusted con a trusted advisor. And this is where everybody wants to be in, in this industry, right? This North Star vision of being a trusted advisor. So Cer certainly always, big always, accounts. always. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And and the best medicine I found for that is always ask yourself, is that helping the client achieve an objective? Yes or no? If the answer is no, it's not on the table. <laughs> so there we go. Cl I client centricity once again. <laughs> there we go. It's as simple as that. It's as yeah. simple as that. And I guess for my for my marketing friends out there, if you want a seat at the table, do come prepared with competitive insights. This is where I see most teams fall short when they don't have a marketing person on the table. They have a feeling about that competitor and what they might do, but marketing more, more, more often than not has something in their, in their drawer that they can just pull out and say, okay, here's the latest report. This is where we're at. Very good stuff. I like that a lot, Ash. Did you? Because I, I, I took a ton of notes, oh, yeah, so I agree. that's good. I think <laughs> yeah, we have to wrap it here, though. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. We do need to talk about the importance of market research at some point, but which is exactly what this episode yeah. has, you know, led us to. Point taken. So thanks for joining us, Uta. And Flo, do you have any words for Uta? And Uta, do you have any words for our audience? No, I, I love no, that. No, thanks so. for having me. Yeah. <laughs> And we, I, I'll, I'll tap into it to see if we can have some that, that process as a bullet point list in the show notes, and then we'll put it there. Other than that, I'll say let's wrap. I'll, I'll stop the recording and then speak to at least you, Ash, next week. <laughs> have a nice weekend. It's a long weekend Wait, in we'll Germany. So, in yay. <laughs> yeah, so Thanks for listening to Unbillable Hours. If you want more, tune in next week. You know where to find us. 